Page. Like, it's so funny. <laughs> like, it's just quality. So there's loads of GA accounts, and I'm like, here's the one that I always scroll for. You know, yeah. you know you're onto a winner when you people are searching, because I'll search your thing to see what you posted. Yeah. Like, that's when you you you, you hit people. Yeah. Like, <laughs> when they're searching you to see what you put up. Thing. I didn't even ask. I was like, you know, what? I don't care. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, we're definitely going to it. Yeah, that's it. You know, but that's it. It's it's huge here. Um, it just depends yeah. on the side of where you go. Yeah. Um, here, grab your stuff, we'll head up the house. Footballs, is it? What's that now? All Ireland footballs. Uh, it's just GA footballs, yeah. is it? The only ones that we would have now in these in this store would be these ones. Yeah. Literally buying all the footballs. <laughs> when there's no All Irelands. No All Irelands, just inter counties. They'll do. They'll do. <laughs> Fitness, repping with love for today. We throw for Sam, we throw for Sam, we throw for Sam, we throw for Sam. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm James from Just Got Things and I'm here with Brian Key Fitness. Thanks for having me. And um, we're just gonna ask him a few questions on nutritional advice and um, recovery after games, meal plans, all stuff like that, and then a bit of strength and conditioning. So the first question I'll ask you is we'll go straight into the the before game. How would you prepare it before a game? Okay, so it really depends on, again, every, everyone, the way that they've came into the game in terms of training and nutrition. We'll focus it mainly on the nutrition side of it because it's the most important. One of the most in, in, frequent things I get asked is, what's the most important thing to eat before a game? When the truth is, it is important what you eat before a game, but it's the day before that's the most important because you're fueling your body and the way your body stores up things like glycogen, your carbohydrates that you eat, normally has that 24 hour window beforehand where you want to come into the game. I always use the analogy, it's like if you were going a long distance in a car and going from Cork to Belfast, you want to make sure you have a full tank of gas before you go and ideally you do it the day before so you're not worried about it on the day. Um, and that's kind of how a game fueling your body with nutrition and carbohydrates works before a game. So the number one thing is if you have a game on a Saturday that you've got all your nutrition right on the Friday and you've done your good quality foods using good complex carbohydrates, your sweet potato, your oats, your brown rice, uh, basmati rice, things like that, that are going to load up your glycogen stores, that are going to fill up your fuel tank before the game the following day. Ideally, you'll space your meals, you'll have your breakfast, lunch and dinner, maybe a couple of snacks in between, and you've got good quality carbohydrates in those meals, and you also have some easily digestible amino acid sources, so chicken, 
fish, steak, they all work great for your body, fueling you the day before. Then the day of a game, it's again, depending on the time of the game, it's gonna be very, very similar. You wanna have some form of good quality breakfast, like um, normally the best one, and one of the ones in my GA Lean Body program, and I'll use that because it was context to my answer, which is my program for, for athletes and GA players that I work with, is there's seven options they have on each day, but the most popular one tends to be or um, some form of oats and, and whole grain eggs, um, or organic free range eggs, um, which is giving you a good quality amino acid source, giving you a good quality protein or carbohydrate, and it means you're going to be fueled up better for the game. And then some people, then depending on the person, will use some form of simple sugar before the game, like a Lucas 8 Sport or something like that, which effectively just tops up that glycogen level and gives you glucose that your brain can have energy directly before you start a game. Others use caffeine getting your nutrition on point and fueling your body and peaking your body from a nutritional standpoint can move your performance to the next level completely. And with the football nowadays, going back 15 years, there wouldn't have been any big built players like yeah, people like Dermot O'Sullivan, he was just naturally big. Yeah. But like looking at Gooch Cooper, he's very skinny, small lad, best football out there. Nowadays, you don't really see that. Like James who he's big, he's built, yeah. corner forward. Like you're training two times a week probably at a match. Where do you fit in strength and conditioning? Like going to the gym, should you bring it in? Like it depends. Like what I found with a lot of people um, that are playing GEA, whether it's football or hurling or Camogie or ladies football, it's irrelevant of gender, is getting your recovery on point is key because I always say that anyone that performs, the, the main difference between people playing at the top level and going to the inter-county or on the inter-county bench to inter-county starting, apart from the, the few genetic talents like the Gooch Cooper who are just different levels on a genetic level, is going to be down to recovery. Like, the better you recover means the more work you can put in. You know, and I'm always going to be, I'm always worried the person that I'm marking is the person that's been in the gym two, three times a week yeah. and they've done their two, three pitch sessions yeah. and, they're, yeah. and they're recovered for the game, yeah. you know? Because if you're in the gym and you're able to build up and you're able to do things like getting your glutes to fire where you're doing a program that's based around you know, hip flexors and getting glutes to fire, it means you can take off quicker, it means you can jump higher. Yeah. You know, if you're building metabolic conditioning and you're building endurance through your legs, you're able to last on in games, so when people are fatiguing in the last 10 or 15 minutes, you're getting, you're well broken into your second wind, and you've got the muscular endurance to be able to break into that last tackle or push through that last run, and the things that are the difference between winning and losing, you know, it's adding up all the inches, and it's a marginal gain of doing all the right things right, getting a gym program that's based around your specific goals, it gets you faster, it makes you stronger, and getting the pitch work where you're doing your ball skills, your handling, your shooting, your passing, and you're recovering between games with good nutrition, the proper supplements, and any other recovery strategies like myofascial release or trigger point tension, whatever strategies you're using to recover, all of these things add up and that can be the difference between starting and, and sitting on a bench. Yeah. Focusing on in the gym, you got in the gym, outside of training and what should you focus on? Like there's boys out there that are working on their abs, they're working on their arms. Realistically it's not really the muscles you should be focusing on if you want to up your strength in the sport. So if you can only reach the gym once or twice a week, what should it be focusing on that hour, that hour and a half? Well, it depends, and I get that because I was that guy. You know, yeah. it's funny. I, 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 we spoke on this before we went on air that like I built my GA Lean Body program was built for me because I was in the gym doing curls and presses. Yeah. Like I was like, I want to look good in the club. Like you know, I want to hook up with some <laughs> hot chick. Oh, I shouldn't be swearing. Edit. To look, the look, look good muscles. You know, they they they're called halo muscles in Galway or carbon muscles. Oh, That's yeah. the name of the club. Like, but with when it comes to GA and improving your performance, it's funny because you can have both. Like, the main thing you do is make sure that you have your movements, exercises, and programs in alignment with your specific goals. You know, things like a barbell box squat is going to be an incredible move for a GA player because if you're working for a slow negative on a barbell squat and exploding up, you're getting glutes to fire and you're going to mimic the movement that needs to take off. Your, everything comes, all your power comes from your hips and your glutes. You know, really, if you can get your glutes to fire and keep your hip flexors loose, it means you're going to take off quicker. It means you're going to jump higher. It means you're going to be able to twist and turn more effectively. So if you're able to get those movements firing in the gym, what happens then when you want the pitch is those muscles are so used, it's called muscle memory, those muscles are so used to firing that they automatically fire on the pitch mm -hmm. and all you do before a game then is you loosen up your hip flexors and you engage your glutes and you're able to take off quicker and you can actually improve your speed so building your program around things that are going to get your glutes to fire is going to be key for performance and then after that it's going to be wherever you're, you need work on if you're if you're weak breaking two tackles particularly for younger guys 17 18 19 year olds breaking into senior teams under 21 teams with those guys older than you 
stronger than you physically. Yeah. You know, it's going to be focused on your compound lift, your military press, your barbell bench press, you know, working in that six to eight rep range, you're building strength, you get a bit of muscle. Like you can't build strength without muscle and you can't build muscle without strength, assuming you're working within a certain parameter, six to eight reps, eight to 10 reps around that. You're going to get one or the other, just one is prioritized. Everything else then is going to be dependent on do you need to get stronger upper body? Do you need to break two tackles better? Um, but that's probably the one that, that everyone could benefit from from knowing about. Yeah. And on this page, we have a, a good large following of teenagers, you know, from 11, youngest 11, and it goes up to 18. What advice would you give them starting off hitting the gym? At what age should you be? What age should you be looking at going on to that level? Should you even focus on it at that young? Mm. I'm gonna answer this kind of two ways because yeah. I started gym. I, I started training. I was probably doing push-ups and pull-ups in my room from 11. That's I said, nice. I said yeah. it, it is and it isn't because I started lifting weights at 13 then, um, and I joined the gym at 16. But I also didn't know what I was doing, um, and I was doing the wrong programs. I was doing the wrong movements, yeah. and and it affected me. It affected affected me negatively for football because those bodybuilding movements, your curls, your twists, your parameters, your eight to ten reps, your all of these things are great for look but they're, they're not going to directly translate onto the pitch. So probably the biggest mistake that I made was doing the wrong movements and focusing on weights and stuff too early. And um, if you're someone that's 11, 12, 13, 14, up to the age of 16, body weight movements are going to be key for you, yeah. you know. Um, but I remember when we had the development squad for the Galway Miners and there's a couple of people coming up from 15 to 16, it was, it was body weight, those guys had to master it. Because if you can body weight, your press ups, your push ups, your squats, your wall sits, things like that, they're going to build up an amazing foundation for when you're 17, 18, 19 and you make one to a gym program. For the 17, 18 year olds, my best advice would be to either get on a program that has video links that shows you exactly how to do the movements or go to a trainer for one or two sessions as someone that's reputable yeah. and to sh get them to show you how to do it. If you can build a foundation at 14, 15, 16, 17 and get your nutrition right with real foods yeah. and avoid the, the, the stuff that's not good for your body, you're going to give yourself a massive advantage over the next 10 years on the guys that didn't do that. You know, The only difference that I had over the guys a lot of the guys that I played with and played against was I had the nutrition down pretty early, you know, and that's irrelevant of age because it doesn't matter whether you're 70 or 17 or 11, getting your eating real foods that your body can use is going to benefit you all the way up through. So another question would be, loads of people during school, during college, um, they have a social life obviously, how do you manage going out, drinking, um, hopefully not under the age of 18? <laughs> Uh, yes, having a social life. <laughs> <laughs> having a social life and mixing GA and school and everything balanced now. Um, it's a case of, I have a lot of people that come through my, and I'll use my GA and body program because it gives really good context to this answer, is an 80-20 principle where 80% of the time you do the right things, you have your nutrition on point, you do your training session and then you just do what you need to do and live life the other 20% of the time. And GA is incredible and the gym is incredible, but you need to be able to balance your life with it as well. You know, and it's a case of making sure that nothing's tilting too much in any direction. You know, realistically, if you're drinking alcohol seven nights a week, you're probably not going to have the best sporting performance or your yeah. physique may not be the best. The same as if you're going to the gym seven days a week and you're not focused on your football, you're going to get dropped from your team and you're not going to have your friends to go out with. You know, it's finding that balance all the way through and you can have it. It's just a case of getting it right 70-80% of the time and then being lenient that other 20% of the time. You know, like if you've trained Monday to Friday and you've been studying in school and you've been working hard, you've been eating your meals and going to the gym and going to football training and then you've been game on Saturday, take the Saturday evening off, even take the Sunday off. You know, eat what you want, chill out, relax with friends, socialize, do what you're doing, and then get back on it Monday again. You know, because that's set, that's still eighty percent of the time you're nailing it. So you can have everything you want. It's just fitting it into your lifestyle and then just building your life around it, not being too extreme on any side. Yeah. Position, how to shape, look good, and perform better. How to look good and type of jersey. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, how to fill out your jersey. Yeah. We're going out to film a football challenge now with Brian, so be sure to check that out. We leave everything in the description with uh, all Brian's stuff. Thanks so much. Why are we looking for the football challenge? Right. Uh